Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about qualitative motion analysis. So anything qualitative is subjective. Um, so qualitative, we're looking at the quality of something. Um, so when we analyze motion in a qualitative way, we're analyzing the qualities of that motion, um, but not in in an objective way necessarily where we're able to measure, but more um, based on what we're observing rather, what we're observing subjectively rather than what we are directly measuring. Uh, so it includes a visual assessment of body position, uh, segment positions, and the relative positions of other tools. So it could be like um, the position of the body, the position of the limbs relative to the golf club that the person is holding or where they're holding the golf club. So it includes both the person and how they're positioned and whatever other relevant tools or, or things are involved in the task that we're analyzing. Um, so the nice things about qualitative motion analysis is that it's practical, readily available, um, it's frequently used, very effective, it requires less time and requires less equipment. Um, so with qualitative motion analysis, um, you can just do it anytime, anywhere. You can uh, be sitting on the sidelines and, and observing and analyzing subjectively someone's movements. Uh, we're not able to, you know, we don't have special vision where we can like measure the the angles of the joints as they're moving or the forces that are being applied or anything like that because it's qualitative motion analysis. Um, but we are able to say, well, this joint is in, you know, a certain amount of flexion compared to that joint or this happened too soon uh, relative to what we wanted for this whole motion, you know, so we can qualitatively analyze um, whatever the task is or whatever the actions are. Uh, so it's very practical, easy, um, like easily accessible because we don't need a bunch of equipment or tools or anything expensive. It's something that you're able to just do on your own. Uh, because it is subjective, it's less precise than quantitative analysis. So quantitatively, we can measure joint angles and forces and, and time things like the time sequence of, of actions. That would all be quantitative. Um, so qualitative is going to be, by definition, less precise. Um, it can happen at the time of the task. Uh, so I could just be sitting on the sidelines observing and taking notes of what I'm seeing. Uh, we could use a video recording. So you could record an action or a posture or whatever it is and, and analyze that later. Um, or subjective analysis of digital imagery. So um, we could take a, a photo and analyze that. Um, the other aspect of qualitative motion analysis is that it is a skilled practice that grows over time. Uh, so although it's nice because it's readily available and you can do it without you know, advanced equipment or a lot of money, um, to have a good qualitative motion analysis, it takes time and practice at learning how to um, do qualitative motion analysis. So that skill has to grow over time to become more and more accurate. And usually that skill grows over, the, over time by doing a lot of quantitative motion analysis. So when you quantitatively analyze motion, you're getting those joint angles and the timing and, and, and all of that in a quantitative way. And the more you do that, the better you get at sort of estimating, <clears throat> estimating those things um, subjectively without measuring it. So usually the qualitative motion analysis happens gradually over time with practice, mostly of doing quantitative motion analysis, which we'll talk about in a separate video. So there are a couple different approaches in uh, qualitative motion analysis. One is the composite approach. Uh, it's a whole body viewing, viewed as a system moving through stages as the person is refining their movement patterns and learning whatever that task or that action is. Uh, so movement changes are observed over time and it's movement of the whole body observed over time as you go through stages of learning. Um, so there have been many different skills that have been defined using the composite approach. 
Uh, so like running, overhand throwing, dribbling, and the list goes on and on. So lots of different skills and, and movements that have been broken into phases and stages of learning and described so that uh, like when someone is coaching children or, or teaching athletes new skills or new ways to do things, um, you have sort of a way to measure what they're doing against um, these sort of standardized approaches and skills. Um, so although it is qualitative analysis, we still have structure and ways of analyzing movement um, that, that helps us give something to compare against and see how the person is progressing or not. Okay, then the component approach is extremely similar, but the difference is that we break the body down into its parts and analyze how each part is moving and developing through the stages of learning. Uh, so component sections of the body are viewed moving through stages as they refine movement patterns. And then again, just like with the composite approach, movement changes are observed over time. Um, and the approaches are very similar, but the difference is that with the component approach, each segment goes through its own series of stages and each segment can improve independently of the other segments. Okay, so it's very similar to the composite approach, but it's more detailed and in depth of an analysis uh, because you're looking at every joint angle and every position, you know, what is the elbow position during the tennis serve or um, what is it compared, you know, as opposed to just looking at the entire body and how it's progressing um, through stages. So it's just a more detailed version of, of essentially the same kind of approach. Okay, so that is all I have for you in this lecture. And I'll see you in the next one.